Let's see how we can use Audio Mixer to control our music volume and sound effects volume. You can also use this for voiceovers or anything else. And when you quit the game, the data gets saved and when you come back in, the volumes are still saved. You can grab my acid pack, my 2D water system, moving platforms, and a bunch of other stuff for free in the description below along with the code. Let's get started. I've got a very simple audio manager that we've created from my previous tutorials. So we've got a sound library that is already populated with a bunch of sounds and a music library for the main menu and in-game music. Then I have a sound and music manager and they respectively have their own audio sources that they use to play sounds. This is key information because this means that all of the sounds and music in my game is routed through these audio sources. So that's where I need to control the volume. And we're going to do that by using an audio mixer. So let's go ahead and create a audio mixer. I'm just going to name it master and then you can double click it or you can go to window audio audio mixer. By default we have a master group and then underneath that we want to create our music and sound effects groups. This means that if we lower the volume of the master the music and sound effects will automatically lower as well. And you can take advantage of these groups. For example in the sound effects you might have sound Sound effects for the UI and the game, maybe voiceovers and all kinds of different things. But I'm just going to keep it simple for this tutorial. To be able to control the volume through code, we need to actually expose it. So just go ahead and click on volume and expose it both for the music and for the sound effect. And then you will notice these exposed parameters have increased to two. And you can double click and rename them to something that we can reference through code that is a bit easier to understand. So I'm just going to use music volume and SFX volume. Next, we need to assign the audio mixer groups to our audio sources. You'll notice that the volume for each of the audio groups goes from zero to negative 80. And that means that all of our sliders also have to go from minimum value of negative 80 to maximum value of zero. And now we have to write the code for the sliders so that they can control the audio mixer. I'm going to do this in the main menu class. I just have one method for when the play button is pressed, one for when the quit button is pressed, and one that just plays the main menu music on start. Now we're going to have to use the Unity Engine audio and we're going to create a public audio mixer reference. And then we're going to create two public update methods, one for the music volume and one for the sound volume. They simply take in a float volume variable and they access the audio mixer and they set the float that we've created earlier. Back in the editor, my main menu script is on the canvas component. And now on my slider, on value changed, I want to create a new event call. I want to drag and drop the canvas, access the main menu script. Here we don't want to use the static parameters. Instead, we want to use the dynamic parameters. The difference is that the static ones, we just send one value Value, while the dynamic ones will feed the dynamic value as the slider changes. So as we change the slider, this event will fire and it will pass the value of the slider to the function. If you test this out now, it will work, but now we're going to implement the saving system. Since all we're looking to do is save some simple settings, we will use player prefs, but for more advanced save data, for example, level progress and stuff like that, we're going to have a different more complicated system. First, we're going to create a save volume method. We're going to access the audio mixer and we're going to get the float from the music volume and we're going to store it in a temporary music volume float variable. And then we're going to save that music volume variable value into the player prefs under the music volume name. And then we're going to do the same thing for the sound effects, except we're going to use the SFX volume parameter. Back in the editor, we want to call the save volume method when we press the back button. That way, when we're finished with modifying volumes and we press the back button, we save the values. Finally, we need a way to load the values. So first of all, we're going to add a reference to the Unity Engine UI, and we're going to add two references to the two sliders that we have. We're going to create a load volume method, and it's just going to 
load the keys from the player prefs that we've saved previously and it's going to load them into the music slider and the sound effects slider. and then we're simply going to call this method on start and that's all the code we need back in the editor we assign the references and we should be good to go